In this video, you're going to learn how to create a custom pattern. I'd like to fill in the floor with a hardwood texture, but none of the patterns in the pattern library seem appropriate. So I'm going to create my own. Let's begin by drawing a rectangle that represents a single plank of wood. Select Shape up here on the Options bar and open the Fill Color. Select a wood color, perhaps this particular swatch is about correct, and then drag out a rectangle representing a plank of wood. When you do that, the Properties panel appears with the Live Shape properties, and you can adjust the height by dragging here on the letter H to the left and right, and you can adjust the width as you see fit to represent a plank of wood. In order to differentiate this plank from adjacent planks, it's necessary to create a border around this rectangle to represent the groove or micro bevel between the pieces of wood in the floor. So to do that, let's click this button and choose Stroke. The stroke color I will change by clicking this color swatch. And I'd like to start as a point of reference with this color in the field. So I'm going to click the eyedropper right there, and that's sampling the field color. Now I want to click something down here that's darker. Not too dark, but just a bit darker in order to differentiate the plank from the edge. So I'll click OK. And it's important that we choose Inside. And the reason is, if it says outside, and I make this bigger, maybe you can see that the edges are curved. When a stroke is inside, the edges are clean and crisp. So I'm going to make this much smaller. Perhaps maybe three pixels. Looks about correct at this scale. OK. So that's a beginning. We have a, an inner color and an outer color that's achieved with the stroke effect. But this plank isn't very convincing, it's just a solid color. In order to make it look more like wood, we can use a filter to create some organic variation. Right click on the layer, just to the right of the name, and choose Convert to Smart Object. I'm choosing to do that so that when I apply a filter, it can be applied as a smart filter, and this gives me editability. So I'll go up to Filter and choose Filter Gallery. And I don't see anything here. I need to zoom out. And there's the plank of wood. We can try different filters here. Perhaps Rough Pastels looks OK. We can try different textures here. I like Canvas. I'll just go with these parameters and click OK. It doesn't have to be perfect, but it has to be passable at some distance away. And that's looking a little better. If I zoom in a little bit here, you can see that it has some texture. The next step, once you have a, a plank, is to define it as a pattern. To do that, we need to select the pixels on this layer. And you can do that by right-clicking its thumbnail and choosing Select Pixels. Then go up to the Edit menu and choose Define Pattern. If this is grayed out, it could be because the selection that you've made isn't a rectangle. You see, patterns have to be rectangles or squares. They can't have curved edges or transparency. And that was one reason for using the stroke on the inside, because it ensures that we have a crisp, rectangular selection. So I'll choose Define Pattern, and I'll type in the name Plank. When I click OK, this pattern is going to be added to our current pattern library, whatever that is. I'm going to turn off this layer and deselect by choosing Select, Deselect. The next step is to determine where this pattern is going to fill. Zoom out, and I'd like to have this pattern appear in the kitchen. But there's no way to do that because the kitchen just bleeds out into the background. So I need to enclose the kitchen, and that's easily done by drawing a couple of lines. Choose the Line tool. Select Black as your fill color. Set a weight of one pixel and draw a line across here. Hold down the Shift key 
so that the line is horizontal. And then choose Combine Shapes from this Path Operations drop-down, and draw another line down here holding Shift so that it's vertical. So both of these lines are on this Shape 1 layer, which is just temporary. Now I'm going to create a new layer, and I'll rename that Floor, and select the Paint Bucket tool, and fill in the floor area. Now, it's filling in the shelves in the pantry, which is not correct. So I'm going to undo, and then zoom in there, and see where the problem is. If you notice right over here, there's a tiny gap. It looks like it's just two pixels, but that's enough for the paint bucket to fail. So we need to fill that in before we flood the paint into the floor area. So to determine what layer this is on, we can use the Move tool and then right-click on that line. It tells us right here it's on the Kitchen Shelves layer. We can verify that by toggling it off and on. I'll use the Pencil tool with a one-pixel brush to draw this in. But as I do that, look at what happened. I actually erased that pixel. And this is happening because of this Invert Adjustment layer. I need to swap the foreground and background colors and actually paint in white paradoxically in order to close that off. So let's go and double-click on the Hand tool to zoom out so we can see the whole image. Close this group. Target the Floor layer. Choose the Paint Bucket tool and swap the colors so that black is in the foreground and click in here. This is the area that I want to fill in the floor pattern. So let's go ahead and apply the Pattern Overlay effect. Open the Pattern Picker and select the Plank. We can drag this pattern and locate it just so. Now this is a good start, but we can improve this in the next video by using a scripted pattern. So I'm just going to stop at this point now and summarize that in this video, you've learned how to generate your own patterns and to assign them with the pattern overlay effect.